بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا ما بعد جماعة المسلمين respected viewers of Hilal TV I greet you all with universal greetings of love, mercy and peace السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to our halaqa on the hajj and we ended off in our last halaqa with the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Hajj Subhanallah, imagine that there is no Surah Al-Salah or Surah Al-Zakah or Surah Al-Siyam but there is a Surah Al-Hajj and when you look at Hajj, Subhanallah, it brings all of those components together but the first verse in Surah Al-Hajj, what is it about? it's not about Tawaf, not about Sa'i, not about Wuquf not about Mabit, not about Rami what is it about? It is about Yawm Al-Qiyamah. What does Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم. O oh mankind, fear your Lord. Shield yourselves literally from the displeasure of your Lord. Indeed, the shaking of the hour is most severe. We went through the verse at the end of our last halaqa. But suffice to say, this first verse, this first verse of Surah Al-Hajj is about Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And Qiyamah, we said, what, what do we have? We have two types of Qiyamah. Minor Qiyamah and Major Qiyamah. Sughra wa Kubra. What's the Minor Qiyamah? Ina mat ibn Adam faqad qamat Qiyamatu. Or kama qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did the Prophet say? Peace be upon him. He said that if mankind dies, if he passes away, his judgment or her judgment is established. That's the minor qiyamah. And the major qiyamah, أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah SWT says, Do they not think that they're going to be resurrected? For a great day, the day when mankind will be standing up and looking on. Standing up for sahat al-qada in the grandest courtroom. Imam al-Hakim al-A'la in front of the highest judge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be answerable for the way that we've lived our lives in this world. Now, Hajj is the ultimate preparation for Qiyamah. A journey to Allah in this life. I want you to memorize this. A journey to Allah in this life in preparation for our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. And it's something that is owed to Allah. It is a debt that we are born with. Yes, Jamaat al Muslimin. Allah SWT says in the Holy Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيله ومن كفر فإن الله غني عن العالمين صدق الله العظيم. And belonging to Allah from mankind is the pilgrimage of the house. Whoever is able and by the means to do so. Man istata'a ilayhi sabila. Wa man kafar. Some of the mufassirin they say this is kufrun ni'ma. Whoever is ungrateful. Whoever does not want to pay their debt to Allah and show gratitude to Allah. Then indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of want from all of the worlds. Allah is free of want. Allah is as-samad. What is as-samadiyya? Allah is absolute. لا يفتقر إلى شيء وكل شيء يفتقر إليه. Allah is not in need of anyone or anything, and everyone and everything is in need of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Allah سبحانه وتعالى doesn't need our salah or our zakah or our siyam or our hajj. And so this concept of دين الله, in fact, it comes in a hadith, the hadith of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عنهما. And it is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari fi sahihi in his authentic compilation of a hadith that a woman, jaat imra'atun min juhayna, a woman from the tribe of Juhayna, she came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqalat, ya Rasulullah, inna ummi nadarat al-hajj. She said, my mother took an oath to perform hajj. Famatat. But she died before she could perform it. 
Can I perform Hajj on her behalf? Qala Hujji Anha. The Prophet said to her, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to her, perform Hajj on behalf of her, on behalf of your mother. أَرَأَيْتِ لَوْ كَانَ عَلَيْهَا دَيْنٌ أَكُنْتِ قَادِيَةَ Do you not see that if she had a debt that you would have paid it on her behalf? The Prophet now, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is asking this rhetorical question to her. He then says to her, دَيْنُ اللَّهِ أَحَقُّ بِالْقَضَى The debt of Allah has even more right to be paid. Subhanallah. So Hajj is literally a debt. And we come into this world with this debt on our necks. And we come into this world to pay that debt. And what is the reality of the payment of that debt? It is the renewal of our covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The covenant that we all took in the world of the souls. Yes, Jamaat al Muslimi. We took it in the world of the souls. And we took it in the precincts of Arafah. After our father and our mother, Adam and Hawa, alayhim salatu wassalam, Adam and Eve, peace be upon them, after they were taken out of the garden and they were lost in the wilderness, where did they find themselves? They found each other on Arafah, from I'tarafah, because they came there and they recognized each other, they saw each other, they knew each other, and they came together again. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah narrates the story in the Holy Quran. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ مِنْ ذُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدُهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا شَهِدْنَا أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ أَيْ أُذْكُرْ Call to mind. When your creator and sustainer, your Rabb, it doesn't suffice just to say Lord. When we say Rabb, we're speaking about the Rububiya, and Rububiya is the attribute of huwa alladhi yakhluq wa yubqi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having the attribute of Rububiya, he is the one who creates and he is the one who sustains. Him and him alone, Jalla fi ula. So, call to mind when your creator and sustainer took from the backs of the children of Adam their progeny and made them witnesses against themselves. Where did this take place? To take place? According to Amu Fassirin, it took place in the precincts of Arafah, in the world of the souls. None of us can remember being there. That's what Allah is telling us in the ayah. And Allah makes that very clear at the end of the ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He narrates to us that He unpacked the entire human race. He took from the back of Adam his children, and from their backs their children, and from their backs their children, and so on and so forth, وَهَلُمُّ jarra, as they say in Arabic, etc., etc., until the entire human race was gathered. And as Allah SWT says in the ayah, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? Am I not your creator and sustainer? Qalu, they, meaning all of us as human beings, qalu bala. They all said, nay, certainly you are. Remember, if a question in Arabic is asked in the negative, then it must be answered in the negative to make it positive. Alaysa kadalik, is it not so? You can't say na'am, yes, because then you are saying, yes, it is not so. You must say, bala, nay, it is so. So we all testified. To the rububiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to his uluhiyah jalla fi ula. That he is our creator and sustainer and that there is none worthy of worship except him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Jamaat al-Muslimin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, An taqulu yawma al-qiyama. Why is he telling us this? That we all testify to his oneness? And that there's none worthy of worship except him. And that we even, we promise to obey him. Because in the tafsir of Ma'abbas says, Allah then said, Ajibu, meaning, Ati'u, obey me. And we all said, Ata'na, we promise to obey you. Something we, we renew five times a day after our salah. 
When we say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak tiyad al jalali wal ikram, sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. We made that promise. Just like we, we say and repeat how many times a day our kalima shahada, ashadu la ilaha illa Allah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, wa ashadu anna muhammadan rasoolullah, salawatu rabbi salamu alayhi. That kalima shahada, especially the first part, when it comes to recognizing the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all made that covenant, that is our covenant that we all made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the precincts of Arafah, in the, in the world of the souls. And this is the fitrah. This is the fitrah with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the inherent disposition, the natural inherent disposition with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all human beings. We come into this world already having testified. فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبَدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ The inherent disposition on which Allah has created all human beings. لَا تَبَدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ There can be no exchange for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the test is now, as in the hadith, كُلُّ مُولُودٍ يُولَدُ عَلَى فِطْرَةِ Every child is born in that natural inherent state of submission and surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ أَبَوَاهُ يَهُوِّدَانِي أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِي أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِي But then their parents either make them a Jew, a Christian, or a Zoroastrian. And that is why somebody who embraces Islam, we say they are a revert, because they've gone back to their fitrah. They've gone back to that original covenant that they made in the world of the souls. And that is what we come into this world to do. We come to renew that covenant. And where are we going to renew it? We are going to renew it by idni Allah Ta'ala. Besides in our salah every day and every time we say the kalima shahada and every time we renew our promise sami'na wa ata'ana ghufranak, we are going to, the ultimate renewal of it is going to be on the plains of Arafah on the day of Wuquf. I leave you all in the protection of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام وعلى رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا بعد جماعة المسلمين respected viewers of Hilal TV once again السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to our حلقة on the meaning of حج so الحمد لله we've been speaking about how Allah سبحانه وتعالى introduces the حج in the Holy Quran in the previous حلقة الحج أشهر معلومات the time frame of the حج from the first of Shawwal to Fajr al-Sadiq to true dawn on the tenth of the Hijjah that's the time frame in which we can go into Ihram with the intention of performing Hajj well Hajj Arafa and in order to attain Hajj we have to be on Arafa from the Waqt of Zawal Till Fajr al-Sadiq, the Waqt of Zawal on the ninth day, the day of Wuquf, the day of standing in Arafah, and that will end on the time of Al-Fajr al-Sadiq, true dawn on the tenth day of the Hijjah. And if I can just go back to, in terms of what is the purpose of Hajj, just before the break we were speaking about the fact that Hajj is indeed a debt that we owe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going back to Arafah to renew our covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That covenant that we all took in the world of the souls. And even though we can't remember being there, Allah reminds us at the end of the verse, أَن تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ Lest they should say on the day of judgment, Oh Allah, we didn't know about this. We didn't know that we were in the world of the souls. We didn't know that we already acknowledged your oneness. Acknowledge that you are the one and only Create and sustain of everything in the heavens and on earth And that you are to be worshipped And you are not to be associated With anything in that worship We all took that covenant We were all there If we can't remember Allah is telling us in the Holy Quran So we are born into this world With the debt of now going back And standing in Arafah And renewing that covenant With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ajmat al-Muslimin, al-Hajj, as well as al-Salah, al-Zakah, al-Siyam, this is all for the same purpose, for the same outcome. Remember we said, 
إن مبادي كل فن عشرة الحد والموضوع ثم الثمرة. So first the definition we spoke about that قصد مخصوص إلى موضع مخصوص لوقت مخصوص ل لنية مخصوصة أو لشرائط مخصوصة with specific conditions. And we we spoken about the موضوع that we're going to be speaking about حج and everything associated with حج. Especially and and more with regards to why we are performing the Hajj, and not too much detail in terms of what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And uh, the next thing that the poet mentions, thumma thamara, the fruits. What do we hope to get out of this Hajj? And we're speaking about in this life before the hereafter. Yes, we know, and we're going to speak about it again. Al Hajj al Mabrur, laysalahu jazaun illa al Jannah. And al Hajj al Mabrur, coming from the word bir, al Hajj al Mabrur, that the because they asked the Prophet, "Asa mal bir ya Rasulullah?" "Qala al bir husn al khuluq, wal ismu ma haka fi sadrika wa karihta yatali alehi nas." Bir, righteousness, is good character, and sin is that which makes your heart uneasy, and that. Which you would not like other people know that you are doing. Allah Akbar. يستخفون من الناس ولا يستخفون من الله وهو معهم. They try to hide from people, but they don't try to hide from Allah, and He is with them. أي بعلمه. As we have spoken about, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's all-encompassing knowledge, جل في علا. So, جماعة المسلمين, this concept of what do we hope to get out of the Hajj in the dunya? In the hereafter? Well, Hajj al Mabru, Laysa lahu jazaun illa al Jannah. The well behaved Hajj. In actual fact, uh, sah- the Sahaba asked the Prophet, Ma birru al Hajj ya Rasulullah? What is the bir? What is the righteousness of Hajj? He said, It'am al Ta'am, wa ifsha al Salam, another riwayah, wa tayyib al Kalam. It's to feed people, it is to greet people. And it is to speak nicely to people. Allahu Akbar. This all has to do with what? With akhlaq, with character. Yes, so all of our, all of our ibadat. You know, our beloved Prophet وسلم, he sums it up by saying, "Innama bu'istu li makarim al akhlaq." I have not been sent except to perfect the model code of character. I have not been sent. So yes, all of our ibadat are done for the sake of Allah and for His sake alone. But in terms of what we get out of it on the dunya, is that it helps us to strive for perfection in our model code of character. Look at salah. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Salah keeps a person away from all that which is promiscuous, obscene, vulgar, evil, and corrupt. It's about character. Look at zakah, for example. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Take from their money charity with which they can cleanse and purify themselves. Of what? Of all the bad characteristics of miserliness, of the love of this world, of materialism, of, um, of not exercising our duty and our trust that we have taken on from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spend of that money. Greed. Allahu Akbar. Greed is one of those, those uh, inherent qualities of man. And every soul has been presented with its portion of greed, Allah says in the Holy Quran. So spending is one of those things that helps us to rid us of that greed and to attain good character. You will never attain bir. You'll never attain righteousness. You'll never attain good character until you spend of that which you love. So salah is for the perfection of akhlaq. Zakah is for the perfection of akhlaq. Striving at least for the perfection of akhlaq. Siyam. You know. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Fasting is being prescribed for you just like it was prescribed on those who came before you in order that you might shield yourselves from all behavior, in other words, i.e. bad akhlaq, 
that would bring upon you the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, was so mujunna, fasting is a shield. Walau فَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ سَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَفْسُقْ وَإِنْ سَابَّهُ أَحَدٌ أَوْ قَاتَلَهُ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّ امْرُؤٌ صَائِمٌ The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fasting is a shield. And if any of you are fasting on a particular day, then let them not engage in any obscenity or vulgarity. And let them not engage in any corruption or transgression. And if somebody wants to, or if somebody insults the fasting person, or wants to fight with them, then let the fasting person say, I am fasting. Allahu Akbar. Even Siyam is for striving for the perfection of akhlaq. And then of course Hajj, as we did in our last halaqa, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجِّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ and whoever takes on the intention of performing Hajj in the time frame of going into Ihram and then eventually standing on Arafah on the day of Wuquf or the morning of the 10th of Dhul Hijjah up until Al Fajr al Sadiq, true dawn, then let there be no obscenity or vulgarity, let there be no transgression or corruption, and let there be no argumentation or confrontation on the Hajj. Allahu Akbar. Akhlaq. Akhlaq, akhlaq, akhlaq. And that's why the accepted hajj is al-hajj al-mabrur. A hajj that is well behaved. A hajj that contains good character. What did the Prophet say when he was asked, Mabir al-hajj? He said, He said, It'am al-ta'am, feeding people. Wa ifsha'u salam greeting people. Wa tayyib al-kalam, and speaking nicely to people. We go to Mecca in order to acknowledge that we are part of this Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commanded our father Nabi Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ الرِّجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ And proclaim the pilgrimage, O Abraham. They will come on foot. And on every means of transport, they will come from every distant ravine and valley. SubhanAllah, it's amazing. We see there our brothers, for example, from Mali, West Africa. And our brothers from Algeria and Egypt, North Africa. And our brothers and sisters from Indonesia and Malaysia. And our brothers and sisters from Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan and Turkistan and Biltistan and Pakistan and Ankalstan and Antistan. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We go there to meet the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brother to brother, sister to sister. لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ That they might acknowledge and recognize the favor of Allah on them. That we are one Ummah. Worshipping the one and only God, Allah Subhana. هو تعالى إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون without any exception all the believers they are one brotherhood and sisterhood so reconcile between your brothers and sisters and fear Allah in that shield yourselves from Allah's displeasure in that in being that one ummah united in their worship for Allah subhanahu wa taala and following the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Holding on to that indestructible rope of Allah, the Holy Quran, and the Sunnah of Abu Prophet Khair al-Anam, salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. Inshallah, we run out of uh, time for today's halaqa, but inshallah, looking forward to being with you next time. I leave you all in the protection of Allah. Wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.